we're now going to have a look at some more covalent molecules. Uh, the ones that we've looked at so far, like water, methane, um, ammonia, all of them, the atoms in them try to achieve a full out shell of electrons. And that's usually what they do, but there are some exceptions to that. And we're going to have a look at some of those exceptions here. Uh, one exception is boron, which is group three. And um, one of the molecules that boron forms is BF3, so boron trifluoride. Um, boron, because it, it's group three, has three outer electrons. Okay, and when it bonds to three fluorines, like this, so remember fluorine has seven, because group seven has seven outer electrons, so it only wants to gain one to have a full outer shell. So boron trifluoride looks like this. As you can see, each fluorine has eight outer electrons, so the fluorine's happy, but boron only has six outer electrons. Okay, so boron is an exception to that rule uh, where it wants to have eight outer electrons, um, and that's an exception that you must be aware of. So boron doesn't go for the whole eight, uh, it usually goes for six outer electrons. Um, if I do the displayed formula for this, It is that. So boron doesn't have any lone pair of electrons uh, once it's bonded. Right, the next set of exceptions are where we actually have more than eight electrons. Now, if you remember, um, the first shell, so n equals one, um, has a maximum of two electrons. n equals two has a maximum of eight electrons. But n equals three has a maximum of 18 electrons. OK, so that rule where we want to go for eight in the shell um, doesn't really apply to that third shell. OK, so when we're talking about the third shell, OK, that's obviously going to be period three. So when we go to period three and go to the non-metals, that applies to silicon, phosphorus, sulfur um, and chlorine. OK, and you'll see the exceptions usually to these ones um, because we want to go for, uh, sorry, we don't have to go for eight um, as the maximum in the shell. We can go above eight. And that is called expanding the octet. So we usually go for eight, uh, which is an octet. Um, the ones in period three can expand the octet. So they can go for more than eight in a shell. So we're going to have a look at some examples of that. So... I mean, there are many examples. I'm just going to pick a few. So phosphorus um, should, because it's group five, it usually just wants to form three bonds. Um, but there are examples where it forms more than that. So PF5 is one example of that. So the phosphorus actually forms five bonds. Um, and in doing that, it does expand its octet. Another one is sulfur. So sulfur is group six. It wants to usually... Um, only form two bonds, but there are um, quite a few examples where sulfur actually forms more than uh, two bonds. In this one, in sulfur um, hexafluoride, um, it's actually formed six bonds with each, uh, so one with each fluorine. Um, another one, so chlorine um, should technically only form one bond by gaining one electron, uh, but there are many examples um, where it actually forms more than one bond. Okay, so let's have a look. Let's go for uh, sulfur hexafluoride. So that's this one here. Let's have a look at how it does that. So sulfur is in group six. So it has six outer electrons. Okay, so I'm just going to draw them all in. Like that. Okay. Um, fluorine wants to bond with those. Remember, fluorine. Um, can't expand this octet, so fluorine must always form um, just one covalent bond. Let's draw all the electrons in for fluorine. This may take me a while, so just bear with me. And as you can see, sulfur is going to end up with more than eight electrons in its outer shell.
Okay, so each fluorine now has eight outer electrons, but sulfur here now has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So it has twelve outer electrons. So sulfur has now expanded its octet. Um, and it now has 12 electrons in its outer shell. And that's quite normal for um, non-metals in the third period. And so the displayed formula for this, so sulfur's formed six bonds, one with each fluorine, like so. Okay, so it's expanded its octet. As I said, it's normal for non-metals in period three to do that. Uh, the reason they can do that is because they do have the d orbitals and um, the 3d orbitals to be able to do that right let's now have a look at um where we have more than one covalent bond so where we have double bonds okay and uh, the primary example of that one is oxygen so oxygen has six outer electrons okay um when it bonds to another oxygen so an o2 molecule it's now going to because it wants to gain two electrons to make a full outer shell of eight and um, it's going to share two of its electrons with another oxygen so if i now draw that out just rearrange this okay so each oxygen must start off with six electrons. So to double check you've done that, so this oxygen, I've used dots for this, so one, two, three, four, five, six, starts off with six electrons, this one here, one, two, three, four, five, six. And as you can see in this process, we are now sharing four electrons, and that is um, two pairs of electrons, okay? So each pair is one covalent bond. So if I draw this out in the displayed formula, I now use two lines, so one for each bond, and that's the displayed formula for oxygen. Okay, so I've got um, a double bond over here. Okay, each oxygen is happy, it's got eight outer electrons, um, and that's a dot and cross diagram for an oxygen molecule. Um, another example of this is carbon dioxide. So CO2, so carbon wants to form four bonds, remember, because it's group four, oxygen only wants to form two. In this case, carbon is the central atom. Okay, you've got an oxygen on either side. Okay, carbon starts off with four electrons. Um, because it wants to gain four, it's going to share those four electrons. So I'm just going to use um, dots for my carbon electrons. Oxygen starts off with six. One, two, three, four. It's going to share two of those like that. The same thing's going to happen over here like that. And if we now have a look, uh, so always double check, do, does each oxygen start off with six electrons? This one, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, it did. This one, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, it did. Uh, carbon group four, so it has four electrons. And yes, it does. If you double check now, so this oxygen here has eight electrons. This carbon here has eight electrons and this oxygen here also has eight electrons. So everything's happy now. If we now have a look over here, this is a double bond. So you've got two pairs of electrons being shared. You've got two pairs of electrons being shared over here. So we have a double bond uh, between this carbon and the oxygen. And on the other side, we also have another double bond. If we wanted to draw the lone pairs in, um, each oxygen, as you can see, has two lone pairs like so. Okay, carbon doesn't have any lone pairs. Um, another type of uh, bonding that you can get is where you have three bonds. So this is what we call a triple bond. Okay, and the best example for this one is nitrogen, which is N2. So again, it's diatomic. Nitrogen is in group five. So it has five outer electrons. And when this nitrogen overlaps with another nitrogen, it wants to gain three. So it's going to share three. So this nitrogen here, I can't draw it in, but that's shared as well. Um, like so. So this nitrogen starts off with five, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, this nitrogen here starts off with five, one, two, 
three, four, five. If you double check, uh, they both now have eight electrons altogether. And now because we've got three pairs of electrons being shared, this is now a triple bond between the nitrogen. Um, if we want to be precise, each nitrogen also has a lone pair of electrons, like so. Okay. Uh, another example of this is hydrogen cyanide. So that's HCN, hydrogen cyanide. Uh, the carbon is the central atom, nitrogen on one side and hydrogen on the other. Hydrogen we know only has one electron, so it always shares that one electron, um, and carbon's going to share one electron with that. Uh, carbon must start off with uh, four electrons. Um, it's going to share three over here. Nitrogen must start off with five. Uh, nitrogen's also going to share three. Uh, I'm going to struggle to fit this in. That one's being shared. Um, like so. Okay. So the nitrogen starts off with five. One, two, three, four, five. Um, that's really badly drawn. I'm just going to draw that at the top like that. Um, it starts off with five. Uh, carbon starts off with four and hydrogen starts off with one. As we can see, all shells are now happy. So this one has eight, this one has eight, this one has two. So you have one covalent bond between the hydrogen and the carbon, and you have three covalent bonds between the carbon and the nitrogen, okay? And our nitrogen here, as we can hopefully see, has a lone pair of electrons over here. Also double check, has each atom um, satisfied the number of bonds it should form? So hydrogen forms one bond, which it does over here. Carbon forms four bonds. It's got three over here, one over here. Um, and nitrogen forms three bonds, which it has over here. Okay, so that fills um, that rule there. Right, let's now move on to another type of covalent bond. And this is a dative covalent bond, or you can call it a coordinate bond as well. OK, I tend to just go for dative covalent bond. It's a covalent bond formed when the shared pair of electrons um, have been supplied by one of the bonding atoms. So rather than um, each atom sharing one electron each, um, both the electrons come from one atom. And we're going to look at an example of that. Um, so if we look at ammonia. OK, so I'm just going to draw ammonia. OK, so five electrons starting off with nitrogen and one being shared from each hydrogen. So if we now have a look at how ammonium forms, uh, so this is NH3. The way ammonium forms is it reacts with a H+. Plus, OK, um, if I draw the dot and cross diagram for a H+, plus, um, it's basically a hydrogen atom that has lost one electron. So it doesn't technically have any electrons. OK. This lone pair of electrons here is going to share its electrons with the hydrogen here. OK, and when that forms, if I just draw it out again. OK, so both the electrons here are being shared with the hydrogen. So both these electrons came from the nitrogen. OK, so this is called um, a dative covalent bond over here. Still a covalent bond, it's still a shared pair of electrons, but it's dative because both the electrons came from the nitrogen. OK, hydrogen didn't provide any um, electrons. Um, when we've done this, so just to make sure this is fully complete, this was a H plus ion. So whenever we do dot and cross diagram for an ion, we always put square brackets around it and a plus sign. Um, this has now formed nh4 plus okay so again i put um square brackets around that and a plus sign over there okay so that's the dot and cross diagram for an ammonium um iron we, if we want to draw the displayed formula of that i'm just going to rub this out um you can draw it out so that's ammonia okay when we're showing a date of covalent bond because both the electrons were provided by the nitrogen um, we just put an arrow like that. So that's still a covalent bond, um, but it's just showing that both the electrons in that covalent bond were provided by um, the nitrogen over here. 